now we've reached the, um, uh, the, the last part of our program. Um, where again, we're winding down with our tea. It's Friday, so we're going to very much enjoy the rest of the day by uh, his esteemed uh, presence, Sayyid uh, Ali Nawab. We uh, thank you for your time. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Uh, and as, as mentioned, I think, I think there's, there's been a bit of a, there's a, a difference between our guest, Sayyid, uh, Sayyid Muhsin, and um, Sayyid Ali, because with Sayyid Ali, we're talking more about family issues uh, and parents and, and upbringing and everything with, with Sayyid Muhsin when we're talking about fishing, <laughs> if you remember. But anyway, um, Sayyid Ali, uh, we're talking about different miscellaneous subjects, um, and today we are talking, I guess, about the duties towards spouses, so both the 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 husband and the wife and their duties towards each other. Yeah, and I, and I guess um, every generation, perhaps when we witnessed our parents' marriages, our marriages are now, you know, the youth are coming into this era and expectations are changing, aren't they? Um, so, and I think there's a, not really, although we know as individual genders, my right is this and, you know, your mm. right is this, mm. I think it would be really good to sort of have a clarity of yeah. what are our rights towards one another um, as husband and wife. Inshallah. First of all, I would like to thank you for having me again and uh, take this opportunity to congratulate yourselves and uh, dear viewers for the auspicious occasion of the birthday of Imam Jawad mm -hmm. Thank you. And uh, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us opportunity to be able to visit his holy shrine mm -hmm. and Inshallah. to take him as a role model in our lives because Imam Jawad alayhi salam, uh, he was young yeah. and he had uh, a wife that uh, unfortunately did not do what she was expected to do. Mm. So we can at, at times look at the lives of our Imams in good mm. times and in bad times right. and take lessons from mm. how uh, they used to deal with them. And, mm. and uh, as we know, Ahlul Bayt, salam, they are the best role models you can ever find. Mm. If you look around the world from the beginning until the end, uh, you will never be able to find a better role model than Ahlul Bayt <laughs> yeah. So when it comes to responsibilities of the husband and the wife between themselves, uh, we tend to give the example of Ali ibn Abi Talib and Fatima al-Zahra in their marriage, where uh, Rasulullah was advising them. He stood by the door of Ali and Fatima moments before they both went inside and Rasulullah went back to his house. Rasulullah advised them both, newlywed, Ali, Fatima. He, he took the hands of Fatima and he took the hand of Ali ibn Abi Talib. He placed the hand of Fatima in the hand of Ali. And he said, Ya Ali, hadhi wa di ati indik. Oh. This is the amana. Oh. And what do you do with the amana? You look after it. You look after it. Oh. So here he was giving lessons to Fatima oh. al-Zahra and to Ali ibn Abi Talib on how to look after each other. Because there will be good times, there will be bad times, or there will be times where things will be difficult. Yeah. So you will have to just hold in there because mm. it will not last, it will go. As a cloud will stand, will rain, and then it will pass on. So he told Fatima to Zahra, Ya Fatima, hada Ali. And he is the best husband to you. Mm. You will never be able to find a husband better than Ali ibn Abi Talib. Which means that, oh Fatima, be careful you don't neglect mm. the rights of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Not only, we're not taking this example as because Ali ibn Abi Talib was one of, one of the, the, the best individuals or the best individual after the Holy Prophet and he was the Imam and he was the infallible mm. and Fatima al Zahra being Sayyid al Nisa al Alami. We just take a uh, an example how they actually executed their responsibilities yeah. towards themselves as husband and wife. Yeah. He said to them both, look, this is a new life. Ali ibn Abi Talib's responsibilities of Fatima is from this door outwards. And Fatima, this which opens another mm. you know, <laughs> question for us, which I tend to be asked mm. on many occasions that, okay, does this mean that the wife has to stay indoors mm. at all times and has no responsibilities at all? No, we come to discuss that, inshallah, if not in this episode, in other episodes. So he said to Ali, Ya Ali, your responsibility is from the door outwards. 
Does this mean the Holy Prophet is saying, oh, Ali, you do not have any responsibilities indoors? Mm. No, we'll come to understand that Ali ibn Abi Talib, on many occasions, he used to help Fatima to Zahra yeah. inside the house. Yeah. And, oh, Fatima, your responsibility, your main responsibility. Mm. You do have responsibilities outside, as she did. Mm. But, oh, Fatima, your responsibility, your main responsibility indoors is to take care of Ali ibn Abi Talib and the family which you are going to make together. So here, uh, the husband has a responsibility towards his wife on, on the basis of shar' and Islamic law. It's like he has to provide uh, appropriate clothing, uh, feeding her, a roof on top of her. Basically, make her live a respectable life. Mm. That she doesn't need to go and, and ask for other people for financial help mm. and support. And the wife has a responsibility towards her husband um, to obey him, to look after him, even if he's outside the house, that she has to uh, take care of his, his private life and the secrets that are inside the house should not be exiting yeah. the door of the house. And also uh, as a sign of, of, of well-being and respect and that, and that mutual love between mm -hmm. them, yeah. she should uh, get up to the household chores, you know, uh, cleaning, washing, pro pro providing so a nice environment for the husband to come back to. Uh, did you want to carry on any more on duties? Yeah, so, so that's, that's, I guess, from a, from a generic um, perspective, it's a great example of the Prophet actually um, kind of explaining very top line um, mm. the duties towards each other. I think if, if we bring it now closer to more um, life case studies or life examples that within our society, I think there's a lot of issues where the husband, for example, got married to the woman. Um, two, three years later, he's kind of, I don't know, fell out of love or he's just generally not interested in, in, in the woman Which anymore. Happen Which many happen, right? And so what happens <laughs> is that he starts to commit certain things that are outside of Islam. Maybe, I don't know, I mean, there's questions here, for example, drinking alcohol or, or taking mm. substances or being with another person, for example. What's, what's her duties? Because this is, this is stuff that will happen on a daily basis in, in, in our society. What, what should the woman do? Because you said, you know, in terms of secrets, in terms of looking after the husband, being nice to the husband, obeying, which I put a question mark next to, but listening to the husband. If, if he comes outside the realms of Islam, what should her duties do, be? Yeah, there are examples. I mean, not every family is a perfect family. Mm. Of course. And if, uh, if there was no uh, ups and downs in the life of, of the husband or the wife, it wouldn't be nice. <laughs> uh, well, it wouldn't be a good uh, experience yeah. because if, if life was always sweet, you, yeah. you will get bored of, yeah. of that sweetness. Yeah. And if, if life was always salty or was bland, then again. Yeah. But uh, here, Islam comes and says, for example, if the husband was, was uh, fulfilling or was bringing or executing his duties towards his wife, Regardless of the example he just gave, mm. uh, taking substances, drinking alcohol, uh, doing you know things that he shouldn't be doing outside the house, here as long as he is providing for the wife and respecting her, and and, and attitude-wise and behavior-wise, he's not neglecting the rights of his wife. Then here the wife has to be patient. She has no right to. Annulled method in the marriage, divorce. She so has she has no right because she's being sustained. Because he her. is not he's not neglecting any of her rights. Mm. Because the the rights of that the wife has, when she is able to ask for a divorce, is the the jurisprudence the the ulama and the the Islamic uh, leaders they will come and investigate whether he is neglecting any of his rights or not. Mm. There are times when you see the husband will go through a phase of, of being troubled because of work, because of you know problems, emotional, psychological, and they and some tend to uh, resort to um, unfortunately taking substances or or alcohol or or gambling, for example, or doing other things. But once they come back home, they try to um, take care or not allow all of those problems. Um, to enter the house, but the wife cannot help to see the, the condition that the husband is going through. But as long as the house or the wife is receiving all, all the husband's responsibilities, then she has to cope in there and support the husband. And uh, not because, okay, my, my husband is drinking alcohol, 
but his behavior with me is good. His, his attitude with me, I hope, is good. He's not uh, physically or emotionally... Okay, I, uh, I, I was going to actually touch on that very subject, that say, okay, he's outside, he's taking substances, he's perhaps seeing other women, and she's at home with the children, and she's feeling emotionally neglected. Okay, he may be providing a roof, a home, clothes, etc. But she's feeling that emotional neglect. And then he crosses lines of possibly some husbands are violent. What are her rights then? I mean, there's two t issues there, the emotional neglect, that she may feel like, you know, okay, he's providing, but I'm not getting anything out of this marriage. And secondly, if he does cross the lines of violence, does she have a right to divorce then? We take examples from history. Okay. There were wives mm. that had bad husbands. Uh, or they had, they had leaders and rulers as husbands. They used to oppress people, mm. like the wife of Pharaoh, mm. or uh, other individuals in the Islamic era. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, when approached by these women, or when approached by husbands, trying to take comfort from the Holy Prophet mm. in these problems, Rasulullah used to always advise them with sabr. As you said, the husband is out there enjoying himself and doing things that um, the female doesn't approve of or the, the, the wife doesn't approve of. But she is there at home taking all the responsibilities seriously, taking care of the kids, feeling down emotionally. He's not, you know, emotionally taking care of me. But again, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa alayhi and ahlul bayt alayhi wa sallam, they used to say, okay, for that period of time, be patient. Mm. Because there might be uh, a, a temporary thing mm. that it will pass away mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the family will, will come back. And it's the wisdom of the, is the, uh, the wife. Mm. If she is strong enough to stand in front of that uh, tornado, let's say, mm. or a tide, um, or the husband is strong enough to hold firm the family and stop it from being shattered, because it is these times that the, the husband and the wife needs to show their true character mm -hmm. and their strength. True. So um, it's for the, for the sake of the family, for the sake of the children. And at times there, there might not be any children. Yeah. It might be only the, the husband and the wife. Yeah. Well, if she cannot bear to see this happening and it is the early stages of their life, She's found out things that she never knew about the husband, mm. or he has found out things that he never knew about the wife. Then um, they should seek help from a wise individual from outside the family, uh, from the outside mm. the immediate family, like mm. their uh, the elders in, in their family, their father, their grand grandfather, or the uh, the imam of the community or the leader of the community. For them to intervene, to speak to the husband, listen, what you're doing is mm -hmm. wrong, your wife is not happy, this will lead to, uh, God forbid, for the family to be shattered. Uh, it's, as I said, jurisprudence-wise and, and, and Islamic-wise, if the husband is providing, is not neglecting his rights, then they uh, generally tend to say that the, the wife, uh, there, are, there are no grounds for the wife to come and mm. uh, ask for divorce. Do you have a question? I have one, but... Well, yeah, I think... You, you, no, I, no, I have a question ahead. which is outside of this, if it's, if it's related. I, my, my question is, um, there's the um, a, a hadith, I believe, that a wife's jihad is to please her husband. Something like that? Yes. Uh, uh, always wanted jihad to al mar'ati husn al taba'al. So what... <laughs> and there that? is great thawab on that. Because, uh, as I said, uh, f uh, a female came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Mm. And they used to come to Ahlul Bayt. Because Ahlul Bayt, they were, they were the first and the last resort for people. Mm. Because they knew them. They are the doctors. They are the, the physicians. They are the engineers. They, 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 they are the ones that carry the answers to many of the questions. Okay. And the, 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 they have the cure for all the problems and illnesses. So they used to say, oh, my husband is that, my husband is that. Uh, he doesn't do his Islamic responsibilities, his, his prayers, his akhlaq at home is, is bad. Of course, uh, Islam come and say, ma imra'atin sabarat ala su'i akhlaqi zawjiha. If there is a female that is patient upon the, uh, the negative morals and the akhlaq of her husband, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will resurrect her on the day of Qiyamah and she has powers to, to do shafa'ah. Mm. Or will, will 
uh, resurrect her with uh, uh, Asiya and Maryam and Khadija mm -hmm. because she uh, was patient and she sometimes people choose not to be patient. Mm -hmm. That's it. I cannot bear to live this life. I am better than this life. Mm -hmm. Then I want to move on. And sometimes it is best for the female to to be helped to get separated and mm -hmm. seek uh, yeah, religious I mean, help to, to so leave that there's, life. There's, there's a certain Islam extent. does not force. Islam, oh, Islam does not come and say, okay, that's it, you're forced yeah. to live like that until the, the rest, rest of, of your life. life. Yeah, yeah. No. And this is why sometimes divorce yeah. has been uh, uh, yeah. advised. Yeah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, no, ab halal, well, can, it's there. Yeah. It's halal, and Allah has left it for their yeah. last And we're really resort, blessed yeah. as a religion that is so sensible because when you see other faiths, they don't have divorce, and it's looked down upon. You know, we have such mercy in our religion. Obviously, it's not to say every couple go and yeah. get divorced. Of it's course. use it within the context, but absolutely. Yeah. There are guidelines. There is, there is a track that you have to take yeah. or walk on until you reach that. It's a last resort, yeah. it's a last option. Yeah. And it's the community members, it's the immediate family, that they have to play their role to uh, reconcile with yeah, the husband yes, and the wife yes. and do their best to keep them together. Definitely. If they come to a stage, if they come reach a level where they see, okay, there's no way possible yeah. that they will come back together and allow uh, this life to continue, then that's it. It's a different topic, isn't it? Yeah. This whole divorce thing is <laughs> it's happening more and more, but we have to... I think just to bring it together, as long as there's equality in terms of their yes. rights, um, as you're of course, saying, Islam so. always yeah. calls for respect, yeah. calls for mutual love and equality, yeah. and does not yeah. advocate for for uh, violence. Does not advocate for you know forcing someone to live in a way that they don't yeah. want yeah, yeah, yeah. they don't wish. Of course, of course. You know, we live this life once, but inshallah, people treat each other with love and respect yeah. in their marriages, inshallah. and you inshallah. know, we have healthy society. That's inshallah. where it comes down um, to. But thank I'm, you so much. Yeah, I'm sure that. Sorry, um, you didn't get to ask your no, question. No, 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 it's fine. I'm sure that this discussion has, has popped some questions uh, in the in the minds of our viewers, um, which uh, which is what we want really. So. I'm pretty sure if you're watching this uh, on, on TV, that's great. But if you are watching this on YouTube, by the way, because I know this, mm. these episodes are put on YouTube, put your comments um, below. Uh, put, your, put your comments below, any questions below on the, on, on the YouTube. Or page. email us. Uh, or even email us. Um, any of the questions, and I'm sure our esteemed guest said, I don't know why we'll, we'll be able to answer them. Um, on that note, yep. um, on that happy the day. note, uh, Friday, Milad Ahmed Jawad as well. So we're going to go celebrate, inshallah, tonight in our local centres. And I'm sure you, you will do yours uh, as well. Um, on that note, uh, congratulations. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.